Hi there, welcome to Paint the Kitchen Red. I'm Nina and I share Instant Pot tips and recipes on my blog, paintthekitchenred.com. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the Instant Pot Dual Crisp Plus, which is the Instant Pot model that has a pressure cooker and air fryer functionality in the same box. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two different kinds of lids for the Instant Pot. One is the pressure cooker lid and the other is the air fryer lid. Uh, I'm gonna go over the parts and go over the two types of lids and we're gonna do a water test, uh, which is pressure cooking water. And the reason you do this is that you get familiar with the Instant Pot and uh, without doing something really complicated. And also if there's something wrong with the, with the Instant Pot, you uh, have time to return it or uh, get it replaced under the warranty. Uh, let's get started. The Dual Crisp comes with a warranty manual, a getting started guide, a cheat sheet that tells you how long to cook different foods, a ceiling ring, a trivet, which helps you elevate your food, also known as a steam rack, and a condensation collector, which I'll show you how to put on in a little bit. So I'm first gonna go over the pressure cooker functionality, and later down the line, I'll show you the air fryer functionality. If you already know how to use the Instant Pot pressure cooker and you wanna skip ahead, you can go to the 10 minute and seven second mark. Okay, the pressure cooker lid. This is the lid handle. Here we have the lid fins and you use them to prop open the lid. I'll show you that in a minute. This is a steam release valve and it rotates pretty freely and you pull on it to take it out. And when you push it back in, make sure you push it in all the way. Here we have the steam release button and you push on it to release steam and you turn it counterclockwise to put it back into the sealing position. This little metal piece is called the float valve and you can access it from the inside and when you push on it, it goes up and down. Now let's turn the lid over and I'll show you the parts on the inside. This is the sealing ring and you can gently pull on it all the way around to get it out of the sealing ring rack. And when you put it back in, make sure that you push it in all the way around. The ceiling ring might be a little tight when you first get the Instant Pot, but it does loosen up as you use it. And make sure you push it in all the way. If you have a part sticking out, you can have issues with the Instant Pot pressurizing. If the ceiling ring has been put in properly, then you should be able to rotate it in place. It may be hard to do, but it should move in the ceiling ring rack. Here we have the float valve once again. I'm gonna remove it by taking off the silicone cover and the float valve just pops right out. Be careful, don't lose it. And then stick it right through the hole again and cover it with the silicone cover to put it back in place. This is the lid locking pin. This is the pin that engages the lid and keeps it locked when your Instant Pot pressurizes. And here we have the anti-block shield. I use a silicone trivet to remove the anti-block shield. It pops right off. And you may sometimes need to clean it if you're cooking messy foods and push it right back in. If you wanna use your fingers to remove the anti-block shield, you can do that. I find it easier to use the silicone trivet or a dishcloth to remove the anti-block shield. So we'll place the inner pot into the base unit to begin with. And we prop the lid open by putting the lid fin into the lid fin slot. There are lid fin slots on both sides of the Instant Pot so you can prop it open either on the right or left side. Now we're gonna slide the condensation collector into the back of the base unit. Looking at it from a different angle, you can see that you could just slide it in and just push it in all the way. The condensation collector is something that collects condensation and generally there's nothing in it, but once in a while you'll find liquid in there. And if you don't clean it out, then you'll have a pretty nasty science experiment on your hands. So check it every so often. Now we're gonna plug the Instant Pot into the outlet and you'll see that the display turns on. 
Now let's put the lid on. You want to line up the arrow on the lid with the arrow on the base unit with an open lock. And turn the lid clockwise until the arrow on the lid is lined up with the arrow on the base unit with a picture of the closed lock. To open the lid, you turn the lid counterclockwise and lift it straight up. We're ready to do the water test. I'm going to pour three cups of water into the inner pot and close the lid. I'm going to program the pressure cooker function. Press pressure cook and plus or minus to adjust the time. We are going to press minus here so we can get down to five minutes. I'm going to pressure cook this water for five minutes. And you press start to start the pressure cooking. And once you do that, the display changes to on. The first time you use the Instant Pot, you may smell a plasticky smell. There's nothing to worry about. This is normal for some Instant Pots. It shouldn't happen again. And uh, in a little bit, you'll start to see steam coming out of the steam release valve and the float valve. And eventually the float valve will go up and the Instant Pot will be pressurized. Once the Instant Pot is pressurized, the display changes to 0, 0, 0, 005 and then counts down. I've sped up this video so that you can see it counting down from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then when the time is up, it'll change to L000, at which point it's going to count up in keep warm mode. And you, it'll continue to count up until you press cancel, at which point the Instant Pot will be shut off. Now let's do a quick release by pressing the steam release button. And once all the steam comes out, the float valve will go down and you can open the Instant Pot by turning the lid counterclockwise and lifting it straight up. Be careful of the steam and you can put the lid fin into the lid fin slot to prop it open. So let me briefly go over all the pressure cook buttons. You have pressure cook, you adjust the time by pressing plus or minus like we did in the water test. Now if you wanted to do low pressure, you would press pressure cook again and you see that it toggles between low and high every time you press the pressure cook button. And now you press start and it'll go to on. Now I want to show you delay start. You press pressure cook and adjust the time and then you press delay start. And then you can change the time to however much in the future you want to start the pressure cooking. In this case it's going to be five hours in the future and then you press start. The next thing I want to show you is the keep warm mode. You press the keep warm button to toggle on and off the keep warm functionality, which is where the Instant Pot stays in a warming mode after the pressure cooking is done. So you just press it and press start. Now you can turn the keep warm function off even while it's pressure cooking. The saute function allows you to saute foods before pressure cooking. So you press the saute button and you adjust the time between 1 and 30 minutes for how long you want to do the saute and then you just press start. Now if you wanted to adjust the saute temperature, just press the button again and it'll toggle between low and high. Similarly for the slow cook function, you press the slow cook button, adjust the time. In this case we're going to do 7 hours and you can adjust the temperature by pressing slow cook to go between low and high. And you can do a delay start of slow cook by pressing the delay start button and adjusting the time for the delay start in this case five hours from now it'll slow cook for seven hours. Now here we have the steam button which is basically very similar to pressure cook adjust the time and you press the steam button to go between low and high and press start. And finally we have the sous vide button. Uh, in sous vide you can adjust the temperature so 
in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the temperature to 140 degrees and adjust the time to three hours and I press start. Now we're ready to talk about the air fryer. So here's the air fryer lid and when you turn it over you can see the heating element below and this is the handle that you use to lift up the air fryer lid. This is the protective pad that you place the air fryer lid on. The air fryer lid stays quite hot for a while so you need to make sure you place it on that pad. And here we have the dehydrator rack which you place in the air fryer basket and it sits at the halfway point of the air fryer basket. This is the removable base of the air fryer basket. You place the air fryer basket into the base and I'll show you that in a bit. And here's the air fryer lid. This is the handle that you use to lift up the air fryer lid and to place it on the base unit. This is a vent that allows air to circulate. Here we have the two fins that go into the base unit. And if we turn it over, you see the heating element protected by an element cover. And here we have a power connector. It connects to the base unit. And as you can see, the lid fins that I pointed to earlier. Here's the protective cooling pad. This is the top and the bottom you would place the hot air fryer lid on the top of the cooling pad until it's completely cool. Once the air fryer lid is cool, you can turn the cooling pad over and place the air fryer lid on it and twist it, turn it in such a way as to lock it into place. And so then you can store the air fryer lid with the cover. Here's the basket and there's a base that allows the basket to be elevated in the inner pot. So you just push down on the base and it easily attaches onto the basket. And when it's time to take it off, just pull it off and you can wash it separately. And so uh, even put it in the dishwasher. This is the rack that goes into the air fryer basket. It's, it sits a little bit higher. You can cook things on the bottom of the basket or on the rack. If you're gonna cook anything on the rack, you will need to oil it. Make sure the inner pot is in the base unit before you put the air fryer basket in. And once you put the air fryer basket into the base unit, you can put the lid on. The sensor on the lid will connect with the sensor on the base unit and the lid fins will go into the lid fin slots on the base unit and you'll use the handle to lift the air fryer lid off the base unit. So now we're gonna try and cook something using the air fryer lid. You can use a slice of bread or tortillas. I'm using some tortillas. I cut them up into little pieces and I'm gonna place them on the dehydrator rack in the air fryer basket. Now I'm gonna put the air fryer lid on and I hear the chime. I'll program it to air fry for 10 minutes. You can change the temperature, but I'm just gonna leave it at 400 degrees. And then I need to press start. It'll change to on, and then it heats up for a couple of minutes, and then it starts counting down. Uh, you, it can be kind of loud and it can get very hot depending on how long you're cooking your food for. So just be careful when you touch the Instant Pot while it's air frying. Uh, just watch out and make sure you don't get burnt or hurt. Now while it's cooking, you can change the temperature if you want to in the middle of cooking. So that's an option. I'm just going to leave it at 400 degrees now. And you can also change the cooking time if you wanted to. So I sped up the video. It's gonna count down from 10 down to nine, eight, seven, six, five. And then when it gets to four minutes, it's going to beep and tell you to turn the food. And so at this point, you can open the lid 
and place the air fryer lid on the protective pad. And I'll turn the pieces of tortilla over. And put the lid back on. And it'll continue cooking. It'll count down once again from four all the way down to one. And at the one minute mark, it'll count down by the second. As I mentioned, I've sped up the video. And once it's done, it'll beep and the display will say end. Now I'm gonna place the protective pad on my counter and put the air fryer lid on the protective pad. If you don't have these uh, Instant Pot mini mitts, they're really handy. They're worth getting. You can get them on Amazon. I can put a link on the video notes. I'm going to use the mitts to remove the air fryer basket. Well, I hope I've given you enough information to get started with the Duo Crisp, and I hope you like it as much as I do. I've been using it a lot. I've been making uh, cakes. I've been making chicken wings, um, grilling things in it. Um, I've even used the dehydrator, and I hope to share uh, recipes uh, soon, so stay tuned. In the meantime, uh, check out my other videos, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and also uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.